Hey everyone, got everything straightened out here and we're going to get started with the video. Um, today I want to talk to you all about really my top choices for um, figs. Um, I know a lot of you guys ask me for recommendations and whatnot. And it's the end of 2018 now, so um, I'm not really going to get many life changing figs at this point. I think um, the season's just about over and you know, I've been stewing over this for quite some time, and I think uh, even before the season really ended, I probably could have answered this question pretty well. Um, so in this thread here on rfigs.com, if you're not a member of rfigs, I, su I suggest you guys join because it really is a great place to learn about figs. Anyway, on this forum, I've created a thread, and it really goes into nice detail with lots of photos of each variety and why I've chosen them. And uh, that's what we're going to show you guys today is uh, a nice little presentation of that. Um, I would love to show you guys the trees individually. Um, many of these trees I've done fig tasting videos on already. So if you want to see a particular variety, you can probably go back to a lot of these this year and see um, the fig tasting video that I did and it will go in depth of the tree in a lot more detail uh, than I can show you here in this presentation however it's very difficult to get all the figs in one place um, you know all of these are not going to ripen at the same time and it's just impossible to pretty much gather my thoughts in a nice concise way I think if they're all scattered around the yard like that so here they all are in one place and this is what I'm recommending for someone who lives in my area and fig varieties and figs in general are very dependent on your location your climate um, more so that I'm realizing this more and more every day I mean I've, I've known it for a while but uh, a lot of things I even talk about with you guys you know I, I tell you what, you know, to do this, don't do that, do this, yada, 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 kind of like different gardening techniques or different things that work for me. They almost always don't work for you unless you live near me. Um, gardening is very, very local, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know that. You know, I, I know a lot of you guys are pretty damn good at gardening and growing things. Um, you know, I think I attract more of a... Of a uh, of a, more of an expert to gardening than I think um, I think I think I don't know I just think a lot of you guys really know what you're talking about so the point I'm trying to make here is that um, you know things are local and because I'm giving you guys recommendations doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna do well for you or as exactly well for you where you live uh, not only that but if you're not doing the same kind of things that I'm recommending in my videos like you know using minimal water uh, deficit irrigation um, if you're not ripening the figs the same um, length of time that I'm letting them ripen for you know this white triana fig here was probably ripened uh, this one I'm looking at here with my mouse that one was probably ripe probably swelling for at least nine to ten days before I picked it. And what I mean by swelling is that it, it, it was hard and green, started to swell, turn color, get softer. From that point on, it took about 10 days before I picked it. And this fig is horrible. It's really not a great fig if you don't wait 10 days. Um, you know, and you may not have the climate, you may not have, uh, you, you may have too many pests in your area like different squirrels or groundhogs or birds that are really preventing you from let you know from picking these figs at the precise day that you would like you know 10 days is a little is a long time um, I mean at day f at day four something could get it you know so uh, that's the point I'm trying to make is that this is really my opinion and um, yes I have tasted quite a bit of varieties this year I've grown a lot of different figs. I've tasted a lot of figs previous years. You know, this is based off uh, pretty good experience, but um, 
a lot of it is opinion. So, uh, Wei Triana is uh, the first fig we're going to talk about, and I would consider these that I'm going to go over. They're called keepers in fig community language, I guess. These are figs that you would, in my mind, you would make copies of them. Um, in our in our goal, in our ever expanding goal of growing many fig varieties. You're always looking for the best one, or the best few, or the best ten. And in my case, I'm probably looking for ten, inevitably, at, at the end of all this. Um, I think the fig community here in the United States has done a great job of already finding some really good ones that uh, are really not rare, have been proven to do well in a lot of the United States. And um, we have some real good figs here. You know, when you get into more exotic and rare things, that's when you start to get in trouble. But there have been some that uh, have proven themselves to me as pretty uh, valuable. Um, I'm going to get to that as well. There's also figs that um, us, us, us in the United States as, as fig hobbyists haven't really explored. Uh, there's so many figs. For some reason, certain figs get put on the back burner and never get reintroduced or get forgotten about and people you know just completely put them aside and don't even think about them where I personally would love to and this is my was my strategy was to find the best figs that are already exist in America before going out and looking towards other countries and what already isn't in the United States you know there's so many unknowns still that are not found um, but I would I would venture to guess that most of the figs in the United States at this point have been found by fig hobbyists, and the large majority of the ones that haven't been found are probably something we already know about that already exists. There's probably very very few diamonds in the rough at this point, unless you're in a California where fig trees grow wild. You know, um, and and at that point they become seedlings. So for you know for known varieties in the United States that are probably brought over from some other country, we've I think we have a good handle on those. But anyway, you know, White Triana is the first one, and this is a very good example of a fig that really has been forgotten about, not talked about, and no one gives a shit about it. This is a fig that's sold by uh, Joe Morley. And Joe has a website here. I've talked about this fig in a tasting I did. Here it is right here, White Triana. He says it yields two crops per season, very productive plant. The fruit has green, golden skin and red flesh, delici delicious, juicy flavor. First crop ripens mid-July in zone five and six, second crop in, in September. And the name originate, uh, originates from Italy, which is where this fig uh, comes from. This is a very common style of fig. I have a feeling that if you were to breed figs, this is just a theory of mine, if you were to breed figs with specific capra figs, maybe it's a similar capra fig that people are breeding that have, that has been used over and over. I don't know. I don't know how accurate this theory is. But my theory is basically that I have a feeling that in the breeding process, figs like white triana have been bred over and over and over again. I feel like when you roll the dice and get a fig, I feel like white triana is a common one, a common type of fig that you would get. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's a fig that's very popular, like Hardy Chicago was, and kind of really traveled all over the world. Uh, but there is very, very close similarities between white triana in a lot of figs, guys. Um, I've grown at least 10 of them, you know, and I've listed them out here, Atriana, Laterola, Lynnhurst White, Canadria, I can go on and on, Persian White, Sicilian White, Lebanese Yellow, you know, the, the list really does go on and on. There's a lot of them. And I personally think they're all really good figs. It's just some of them are have genetic differences between the other. Um, you know, they've adapted, they've probably mutated in some way, just like the Hardy Chicago types, how they're all so damn similar, but 
they're very they're slight variations in them and this is one that I found to be quite good the interior gets quite dark red you can see that here this is not necessarily the dark red of the Smith here but it actually is quite dark red um, compared to all the other figs I just mentioned and I think that dark red interior gives it an extra bit of a berry flavor it's also thicker um, it has a more jammier thick interior and you know like I've said here it's mid-season it I agree with Joe Morley and his his um, assessment it is very productive and I think it does pretty good with the rain um, it has very thick skin that you can also peel very easily and uh, I just really think this one for the thickness of the pulp it's really really good like it's it's very jammy really good quality fig um, and it also seems to do okay with splitting and I've, I think I've seen this fig split in the past but it's not one that really splits a lot um, Smith is a is another one on my list that I would have key, uh, multiples of in fact I'm gonna have like five Smith trees at the end of this at the beginning of next year um, it's a very tasty mid-season fig. It's probably the best fig I have out of 170 varieties or whatever it is. This so far is the best one overall. Um, and, you know, it just really is tasty. And the fact that it's so tasty and it's also mid-season makes it really, really good. I mean, the whole thing, the whole crop will ripen for you every year here in Pennsylvania. You know, and it also likes, it doesn't mind being in a humid climate, which is really nice. Some figs actually taste better in humid climates than they do in dry climates. It's very strange. Um, Azores Dark, you, know, you guys have heard a lot about this fig. Obviously another one. And I've said this before, it's very comparable to Hardy Chicago. Uh, more comparable in my mind to Malta Black, which is different than Hardy Chicago's and those type figs because they get honey. Um, they're a much sweeter berry fig. Some people say they taste kind of like uh, mango, maybe a little peachy taste in there. Um, it's really berry plus honey. And I like the intensity of the berry and I like the sweetness of the honey. And for me, it ripens two years in a row now with my greenhouse that gives it a head start. It ripens uh, July 1st, two years in a row. So I really love the Hardy Chicago types. Um, you can't go wrong with them, any of them. You know, even though mine is Azores Dark and yours is Hardy Chicago, it's still a really good fig. Really, it is. Um, and it is probably the best overall fig you can have in a cold climate. Uh, definitely planting in the ground in a cold climate. It's just amazing, actually, that fig. Um, Italian 258 is another winner. I've talked a lot in length of this fig. Um, I think it's earlier than Black Madeira Preto, Black Madeira KK. Uh, definitely a similar flavor. And it also seems to have a shorter ripening period from the first fig to the last fig, meaning that it reliably ripens its crop here, uh, at least with a little bit of a head start from a greenhouse. I think next year it'll be even earlier. Um, just because of how hard my tree was pruned at the end of last year. So this year I'm going to leave a lot of wood on there and it's going to grow. It has a, a really nice form to it and it's really going to put out um, figs earlier for me. So overall, it's just a very good mid to late season choice is really what I would put it. It has top notch flavor. Um, if I lived in California, Instead of Italian 258, I would have Black Madeira. You know, it just depends on where you live. Uh, Violette de Bordeaux, you know, this fig does well everywhere as well, uh, um, including Italian 258 and Hardy Chicago. Violette de Bordeaux is an exceptional variety that really doesn't get enough credit. Um, and these are very common figs at this point. Violette de Bordeaux is super common. Italian 258 really common. Hardy Chicago, 
you know, these white Triana types are all very common. Maybe Smith is a little bit less common, harder to find. But Violette de Bordeaux is exceptionally common to the point where you can get this at a lot of nurseries online. It's super productive. In terms of productivity, it's probably the most productive fig that I'm mentioning here. Because um, it does produce a nice Brava. Um, so combined with the figs on every node of main crop, plus you get a really nice Brava. And the Brava is a equivalent to main crop. It's one of the few Bravas that's actually really good. Um, it takes a while to get a really productive Brava, a couple years, but you will get it. And the flavor is um, really something. I mean, it's a solid 8 out of 10. Um, you know, it's got, I was surprised this year because I've seen pictures of it with, with some honey uh, kind of pooling on the inside of Violet de, de Bordeaux types. And I'm wondering, it to be at the end of last year, I was like, why doesn't my Violet de Bordeaux type do that? Or types, I've had, I've tasted four of them last year. None of them had the honey in there. But this year, uh, they did. And I think because I let them, um, I picked them a little bit earlier, and maybe my tree matured a little bit more. Um, still up for debate, but it's really that great berry honey combo that makes it very, very good. Ronde Bardot, this is my first year eating a lot of these, and I'm very surprised at how good this fig is. Um, I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't know just how good. It also has the ability to dry on the tree for the most part. Um, I think Violette de Bordeaux could dry on the tree as well, but sometimes they crack a lot and there gets some mold in the cracking. It makes me want to pick the fig earlier. You know, Hardy Chicago can also pretty much dry on the tree, but Ron de Bordeaux seems to have great resistance um, and, the, and a great ability to dry, at least shrivel up you know, not necessarily um, dry like a fig you'd have in Arizona, but uh, certainly something shriveled up and really concentrated here. That would be uh, a very high quality fig. I, I think you can also pick this fig as well as Vila de Bordeaux. You can pick them early. Um, you don't have to necessarily let them ripen so long. And I think that's why this, these two figs appeal to so many people and why they're talked about quite often is that you don't have to have a lot of patience um, to pick these figs. They're good at pretty much all stages. And this is one here that we picked that it's pretty much dried on the tree for me. I, for, I didn't even see it. Um, it's one of those figs you just miss on the tree, and it was really, really good. Um, it was probably a 9 out of 10. And I've since had a second crop of Ron de Bordeaux because it's super early. It's probably the earliest, or it's in the class of the earliest figs in the area that you can have in this area. You know, it ripens along with, like, Improved Celeste, Rasty's Persian Unknown, the Traces, Splace, uh, you know, Malta Black, they all ripen so early. So for, you know, being a very early fig and also tasting exceptional is like, it's a no-brainer for me. Um, Long D Out is another one. I know I, I just said that, the pronunciation totally wrong, wrong. Long de Dupe, I don't think that's right either, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, I, um, I think this fig is very widely found all throughout Europe. It's all over the place. Uh, Lungo de Portugallo is what it's called in Italy. Uh, it's all over the damn place, really. And it's all over the United States now. It's very hardy. This fig's everywhere for a good reason. Um, you know, the, the, the figs are massive. It's got a nice berry flavor with the honey combo that I love so much. It's pretty jammy. You know, I've been in love with this variety. I've made uh, a second copy for myself that I'm going to put in the ground in the spring because it's so hardy. Um, you know, there's many figs that go by this, this uh, many figs with different names, but they're, they're pretty much the same, again, with slight genetic differences. 
Um, this one in particular for me, I think does pretty well, and I really like it. Um, also, very quite early. Um, it's probably you know sometime early to mid. Uh, Zafiro is one that is new to me this year, and it was immediately a fig that I fell in love with. Um, the first couple off of this tree had a bit of a citrusy note. A citrusy note to it, and then as it uh, as it you know came along a little more in the season, that citrusness went away, and I kind of was picking up um, you know a lot of honey. But it's an interesting honey fig. Um, by far the most complex, the most interesting honey fig I've eaten. The nice part about it is it doesn't have your typical skin that most honey figs have. I feel like most honey figs, for whatever reason, are like they just have the worst skin. Like I really love black figs because the skin uh, is usually like paper thin, you know, uh, super thin and actually can hold up to the rain pretty decently. Whereas most honey figs I have, even in LSU Champagne, kind of splits down the side I've seen and splits at the eye. This one was a, a absolute winner in the rain that we had in September. Uh, we had so much rain, and this was the only one at that time that didn't split. And it only takes about five days from it to be swell from from swelling to perfectly ripe, which is a really great characteristic. Even though I love white Triana, but it takes ten days, and that's quite annoying. Um, so I don't really know uh, much about the ripening season of this. It seems quite early, and I know it does. It's going to do well in earlier uh, or in shorter season climates. Um, the person who who uh, who sold me this fig actually this was the one he recommended for shorter season climates, and I believe it. I can see it from my tree, um, and the citrus notes went away, but the honey notes. Are quite good, um, and then the last couple figs I've had, the skin particularly has a nutty coconut flavor. It's actually quite distinct, and it's really really good. Coldenom Blanc, just like any of the Coldenoms, should not be overlooked, um, but they're really tough to ripen here. Um, I think Coldenom is probably it should be considered in the class of Black Madeira and Italian 258. In terms of taste, like it's a really tasty fig, all of them, no matter which one it is, Roja, you know, um, Grease, Blanc, you know, they're all really, really good, Blanc and Negra. Um, so, you know, this one in particular, I got to ripen in September, and I think because it was so early and we just came out of a, a heat wave, this one ripened for me September 1st, and it was perfect. I could not have had a better cold Adam fig, I think, and immediately made me a huge fan. Um, you know, but it's so late that makes it really a bit of a challenge, and I think it's also late, but it also kind of has a pretty wide window. Um, but the one I had in, in September really did had like... Uh, cons a very very thick consistency like it was so thick that I thought it was like pancake batter like at least I've never eaten pancake batter but it's like the consistency of like something that's so thick that when you pour it on the on the skillet it just slowly spreads and I feel like that's what this would be if it was in liquid more liquid form it was like distinctly thick and the only thing that's come close to that thickness so far is uh, white Triana so I really like cold it blanc for this reason I feel like I was eating a, a fig cake is what I said here so Suwati is another one I've talked a lot about it done multiple videos on it Suwati is one though like white Triana that has to ripen for at least 10 days before you pick it um, the neck has to turn black. 
It also has a very unique flavor. It's unlike any of the figs I have because it has like a like a light berry flavor to it that uh, is just different than the rest. It's like it's like a sugar berry flavor. It's very hard to describe, to be honest with you. You know, you could say that Floria is a bit like um, is a bit light berry as well. You could say that Toronto Unknown and Brandon Street Unknown, these two figs down here that I'm about to talk about, they also have a light berry flavor, but it's different. Um, and I really, really like it. Um, it's also quite early, it seems, at least with the greenhouse. Um, even last year when it didn't have the greenhouse, but it was a newly grafted plant, it did ripen quite early. Uh, but this one with the greenhouse ripened just after Azor's Dark. Um, it's also pretty rain resistant and split resistant. The only problem I had with it this year is that the figs didn't hold on to the tree as long as I would have liked. Um, I don't know why that is. Because previous years they held on like it was, you know, for dear life. They just would not come off. Uh, and then they were able to shrivel on the tree. I got some to shrivel on the tree this year, but not as many as I was hoping for. Um, Toronto Unknown and Brandon Street Unknown, these are, again, light berry figs, but if you pick them at peak ripeness, very ripe, um, they get a hearty Chicago level berry flavor to them that's uh, somewhat intense, probably somewhere in the middle. And they're very early, it seems like. I don't know if they're the same, but I have a feeling they are. But at the same time, you know, having them side by side like this on the same day made me think they weren't. The skin color also seems to be different. The leaves are pretty similar. I don't know. But the point is they're very similar in taste. And, uh, you know, I kind of think of them in the same way. And they're very good figs. Also early, productive. Uh, Taramo is also very hardy, you know. Very nice figs to have in my mind in this area. Uh, now, here we get down to the hopefuls, and this is where research has come in and where other figs that I have eaten have come in that I think could break into the keeper status and could become keepers, you know, could break into the top 10. If this Is, is this even 10 right here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11. This is actually 11 or 12 figs if you count these to be different. Um, so top 11, I guess. These could break into it. And Pastelieri is probably my number one fig that I'm most excited about. Um, you know, I, I, I would have tried it by now, but the thing uh, drops. This is the problem with this variety is that uh, the tree is young has a younger root system, the figs just fall off before they're ripe, and uh, it's, it's a damn shame. But, um, you know, it's very, very tasty. I, have, I haven't heard of anyone that didn't like it. Um, everyone raves about it. And guess what? It's as early as Ron de Bordeaux, Improved Celeste, Floria, you know, Taramo Unknown, Hardy, you know, Malta Black. It's so early but it tastes probably as good as Smith does. So that's pretty amazing. Um, so it's, it, in my mind, it could beat out Smith overall and be the top choice. The problem with it, again, is that it drops its figs and um, at a young age, and it can split. Um, I planted mine in the ground because I believe that establishing a strong root system on this variety is the key to stop the dropping. So either put it in a larger pot and wait like three years, or put it in the ground. Uh, it's also very, very hardy. It's one of the hardiest figs. I mean, overall, this fig has it all. It really does, except for the splitting and the dropping. I can't complain about a single thing. More just so grease, uh, it's a very tasty fig. It's got a lot of acidity a lot of berry sharpness if you can you know it's got a lot of bite if you believe the bite is the same thing as the acidity then it's got acidity you know um, like a similar flavor to Italian 258 Black Madeira even Smith like 
it's got that sharpness, but even more so, more intense. Um, and it's also probably mid-season here. Like it, it doesn't need a head start in a greenhouse to ripen a full crop, which is really nice. Um, and I would consider this in a similar way as Italian 258. It just is a later season fig, but it, it ripens a lot of its crop um, for you in what in this, you know, without problems. Um, Blue or Black Celeste is another fig that I've, I've become very hopeful for. These are not the same, I believe. Um, I've put a lot of time into it this year trying to research these two figs because I strongly believe, again, that I said in the beginning of this video that certain figs we should look at, at certain figs in the United States first before going out to other places and other countries to see what we have. And these are two Celeste heirlooms. They've gotten the name Celeste, and I think in the fig community anyway, a lot of people don't like Celeste. A lot of people love Celeste, but I think the name Celeste attached has kind of detracted from the beauty and the great qualities of these varieties. So for me, I wanted to figure out if there was any Celeste heirlooms in the south somewhere that would be really good and I came up with these two. Blue Celeste is actually very well documented in Condit's monograph and uh, you know he says really nice things about it other than the taste. But I've tasted it I've seen photos of it. I think it's a really tasty fig. Um, Black Celeste also looks tasty, and it looks it actually looks better in taste than Blue Celeste. The only thing is I just don't know a whole lot about it past that. Um, you know, if it's related to Celeste, it probably is early. It probably is cold hardy, and it probably does pretty decent in the rain. So, you know, any Celeste that looks tasty to me, I'm going to try to get. And I think it's going to be a winner here. Uh, Campaneri is a French fig um, that comes from uh, a guy in France that is now, it's now coming into the United States, making its way. And it looks incredibly good. Um, you know, it looks like a fig that is easily going to taste extremely good. And I asked the guy, who grows this one in France and where it originally comes from, at least, uh, you know, at least what collector it comes from. He said it's one of the most cold resistant figs that he has. I'm going to plant one of these in the ground. I have two of them now. Um, it's also quite early, I believe, because for him, it ripens in France in mid August, which is, which does translate over to here. Um, and I have no doubt it would be a very early fig, probably, you know, second week of August or late August, you know. Um, so for me, it's a no-brainer. It's probably going to be amazing. I've never eaten it, though. Uh, DN Manel, this is a fig I got a video on, I believe, this year, if I recall. Um, I believe this is similar to Grise de Saint Jean, another French fig that's early, does pretty decent in humid climates and also tastes really great. I can't really confirm that because I don't have Grease de Saint Jean yet, but the leaves certainly match and the fig certainly matches in my mind. Um, and it's very tasty. Um, it also seems very reliable here. The end man now comes from Montserrat Pons's collection. And, you know, just because it comes from Montserrat Pons's collection doesn't mean that it's completely unique. You know, figs travel all throughout Europe, and a French fig could have very easily traveled to Spain. Um, so, you know, uh, really, really interested in this fig, and I want to see more from it before I, I bump it up to the keeper list. Moscatel Preto, same thing. Really like this fig. It's got a complex berry flavor. People say it tastes like caramel, caramel. Um, for me, you know what? Honey is honey. Fig nectar is fig nectar. You want to call it caramel? You can call it caramel. That's up to you. But, um, you know, it's a similar taste profile, actually, to DN Manel. 
complex berry with a lot of honey. And um, quite a few figs have this similar taste profile. It's, it's a very good taste profile to have, I have to say. Like Ron de Bardot is quite similar. Um, the Trace, the Trace is Place is quite similar. Um, at least in the taste profile. So, you know, Azores Dark is like a, a fruity berry combined with honey. Smith is like a sharp berry con combined with honey. Whereas DMNL, Moscatel, Preto are like a complex berry combined with honey. Quite similar figs, I guess you could, you know, I guess if you wanted to really narrow it down, but, um, you know, it's another difference in taste that you may have a preference over, a different kind of berry. It's also a very large fig, Moscatel Preto. Doesn't need a head start here. It does well in the rain. Uh, it takes a few years to get going, though, but it is, it's definitely a winner, and I just, I just want to eat more figs off of it, have more time with it before I bump it up. Uh, Hate of the Argentile, same thing. I love this fig. I think it has a lot of potential. Another French fig that means early, I believe. Um, and it's really, really good uh, that people have been saying, you know, in, in warmer climates. Um, I think I'm one of the few people growing this fig in a, sh in a uh, colder climate. But my friend Garlic Mike actually said this year that he really liked it. Um, so I, I have a lot of hope for this one, except this year it just... I up potted it into a larger pot. It did didn't have a lot of heat, and it also got plagued with scale. And the thing didn't grow that much. It only put on two figs for me, and they kind of fell off before I would have thought they were perfect. You know what I mean? So I'm waiting to see kind of more from this before I bump it up. But I think it's again another winner for short season climates. Sultane is a very well documented variety, commercially documented also. Um, you know, Bode in France, this is another French variety, guys. It seems like the French varieties in northern France and the northern Italian varieties are some that do very well here. Um, Sultane has good cold hardiness. Um, it produces a Breba, but if you remove the Breba, which I probably will, um, it will produce a pretty pretty early main crop, um, somewhere around mid-season. We're going to put this one in the ground because I know it's quite hardy. Um, it's mid-season. It has good rain resistance for sure. So this is a good choice, I think, in ground here. Um, I killed my tree, though, last year. So I'm kind of starting over from scratch this year. I have a small plant we're going to put in the ground in the spring. And uh, so I can't really bump it up just yet, but I have really high hopes for it. I love the figs that I have eaten off of this tree. I also have uh, some Adriatic types that I really like. Blanche de Du Cezanne, White Madeira Number 1, Strawberry Verte. I've never had White Madeira Number 1, but people really rave about it recently. There was some uh, hype in the beginning, then people kind of cooled down on that hype. And now people are going on the hype train with it again. I don't know. Never had it. But uh, Blanche de Du Cezanne impressed me a lot. It has a very thick, jammy pulp. Very thick. It, I felt like I was I felt, I felt like I was eating literal jam out of a jar. Uh, it was really very close to the consistency of jam. Um, and it's also quite good. Trace Displace is the last one here. And, you know, Trace Displace is exceptionally early. It goes right along with Ron de Bordeaux, Pastelieri, and Cruz Celeste, Floria, Malta Black. You know, it's the first of August here to ripen in a pot with no head start. It also has great flavor. Complex berry is what I was getting. And it has a lot of honey. The only thing that I necessarily... I mean, it's not that I don't like it. I just think that this one matches Ronde de Bordeaux in that slot, right? You've got early figs, you got mid-season figs, you got late figs. And I think Ronde de Bordeaux in the early slot has a similar taste profile to this, but it's better overall. So um, 
for me, I'm just kind of just waiting to see what happens to the trace displays. I don't. Th I think it has a place in a lot of people's yards, but uh, Ron de Bordeaux has proven itself time and time again to be an exceptional variety where the trace displays is really kind of new, and we need more information on it. So anyway, guys, that is the video, and those are the varieties that I recommend. We have all the hopefuls of those going to be able to break into the list of becoming a keeper. Um, and again, all of these varieties that I mentioned here are my favorites in this location. So you can definitely take my word for it if you live near me. Uh, if you don't live near me, you may have to do a little bit of trial and error. Do a little bit of research. You know, Ron de Bordeaux is really good in humid climates, whereas it's really not so much in a drier climate. Same thing with Smith. Um, you know, Long de Out does well everywhere. Lila de Bordeaux does well everywhere. Col de Dame. All the Col de Damas do well everywhere. We don't know about Safira. We don't know about Suwadi. You know, we don't know about Brandon Street Unknown and Taramo Unknown. Pastillieri does well everywhere. Borges Soak Grease everywhere. Blue or Black Celeste, we don't know. Campanari, we don't know. Dan Benel, we don't know. Moscatel Preto, we don't know. Hate of the Argentile does well in drier climates rather than humid climates. Sultane does well everywhere. So, you know, it really depends on where you guys live. Um, and it's really going to make a difference, I, I promise you. But I can tell you for sure, these guys... Oh man, I was so spoiled this year with some of these figs. I mean, the pictures are just even looking at them. I put together an album, you know, of all the figs I got to eat this year, and I just was, I couldn't believe it. I could really couldn't believe it. All the hard work I've been putting into this hobby has just paid off. Um, so anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this. I really hope uh, if you got to the end, kudos to you. I hope you guys uh, found this useful because I know some of you have been asking me what is my top figs for this climate. You can also go into my Google Drive spreadsheet which is in the description of this video and every video I've ever posted in my spreadsheet that's all about figs and every, a lot of things that I'm growing. You can go in here and see the top performing figs that I recommend for this climate for short season or rainy climates. I think a lot of these will do well in the south, all along the east coast, uh, parts of the Pacific Northwest, England. You know, these should all do well in a humid short season climate. So thank you all for watching and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you all soon. Take care guys.